One of these 30 men, someone's going to make history. Someone's going to make history. Indeed, you know what? Even the fact that Roman Reigns, the current WWE World Heavyweight Champion, will be defending his title in the Royal Rumble match, that in and of itself is making history. Now, Roman might wear the title around his waist to get in this ring, but one of you is going to be the man. And it all starts with throwing Roman Reigns right over this top rope. Now that doesn't mean, of course, that you actually win the Royal Rumble match, although it'll be a privilege to throw Roman over the top. Because, let's face it, you have to face 28 other competitors, but nonetheless, it means one of you, any of you. It means that it's every man for himself. It means it could be... Who? Dolph Ziggler. Where's Dolph Ziggler? Where is he? Oh, Dolph he Ziggler, is. for 10 long years, you've reached for that brass ring. This could be your time. It could be. Or Kevin Owens. It could be your time. I mean, you've accomplished so much and so little. If you win the Royal Rumble match, it could cement the greatest first year in WWE history. It could be. It could be a, a, a new day. A new day. <laughs> WWE World Heavyweight Champion Xavier or Kofi or Big E, and by the way, that That's ain't not booty. booty. <laughs> it's just like I always said, man. Anyone but you, Roman. Anyone but you. Vocabulary too. Uh, I've been hits in the distant distance. It's all brand new. new. Yeah. It's through. I'm in the planetary uh, like Doctor Who. Who, who. So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. All right, everybody. Welcome to the latest Ringtime Pro Wrestling Podcast. Keith and Keisha are in the building. Keisha, say hi to the people. Hello. What up, though? Listen, y'all. Y'all don't understand how happy I am to be back and everything. I'm overly excited. I am way too excited because last week was a struggle, Tiva. It was a struggle. Oh. Yes. Um, if you saw a disturbance in your programming guide, last week we did not do an official Ringtime Pro Wrestling show. Uh, Keish was down and out and... We just decided to go ahead and give y'all a break. Since we already fed the streets with uh, the New Japan Report, our newest segment that will be added to the Ringtime Pro Wrestling programming lineup, uh, I appreciate everybody who downloaded the New Japan Report. It has been retweeting and sharing. It's been a great help. Uh, continue to do so. But we are back with our regularly scheduled program. That's right. As we are ready to talk about this Royal Rumble. As WrestleMania season officially kicks off in the WWE. Okay. Anyway, sorry, I thought I'd try that out. Uh, lots been going on this week. Uh, lots going on in other promotions. We'll talk about it all. We'll glance over some stuff. We're not gonna go heavy into TNA, but just in case you don't know, we have a new world champion. Mm. Again, uh, this time it is Matthew Hardy. What? He has won the cup again, and apparently he has went rogue. Uh, rogue? Matt, yeah, Matt Hardy turned heel, man. Uh, he has turned heel with the help of his lovely wife, Miss uh, Rebby Sky. Stop playing. Hey, and I don't know what it is, but since Rebby had that baby, she done got thick. <laughs> That's what happened, man, the baby. Man. Please. It, it looks good on her. See, so anyway. wrong with you. Just, mm -mm. Yeah, wrong with me. Yeah, get your life together. 
I'm I just, a red-blooded American man. Yeah, you don't watch man. I'm an American, and she is good for America. That's all. Um, Hardy's the new champ. Don't know how that affects him as brother. We'll see how it goes. Tyrus, a.k.a. Brodus Clay, has turned on EC3. Um, I think this is a sign of the EC3 face turn, which I think comes a little soon. Mm. Um, I think I would like to see him run as a heel a little bit longer and help get some more gas over. All right. Because I think he had that capacity. And then, but you know, TNA does things on TNA time. Speaking of which, Keish, the Loa does not want me to watch TNA. All right. He has told me that TNA is bad for me. And you know how he told me it's bad for me? Why? He, t- he took away Pop TV. So apparently, and I thought I was the only one, but apparently it has happened to everybody who has Comcast. Uh, the first week you watch Pop TV and your regular channel lineup and you got like the 140 package or whatever and everything was good right so i'm downstairs on my big tv and i'm turning to pop tv and it's telling me that it's not available telling me i need to subscribe now mind you i watch up i usually watch upstairs on a smaller tv because uh pop tv don't come in hd so ain't no need to straighten my eyes on my big tv for something that ain't in hd right all right so I thought maybe it's just something weird with the cable boxes. So I went upstairs, totally erased from the lineup. And I was like, huh? Yeah, apparently they moved it to the higher tier lineup. Really? Yeah, so it, it actually put me in the exact same problem that I had with Destination America. Wow. So, uh, yeah, for me to report on TNA, everybody, uh, I think I'm going to do it. But it's just going to be a little bit behind. Uh, We will do that. Uh, This show, you ain't got to worry about a lot of TNA because, hey, man, it's about that Royal Rumble anyway. But just so you know, uh, if we don't get a lot of TNA out there, it's because whatever was available online to get to see what happened to TNA. They're not good enough for me to pay the extra money, if you want me to be honest. Like, I'm not that interested in ponying up an extra 15 bucks a month to watch Impact Wrestling on a non-high-definition channel. Mm, mm, mm. Right? And I don't think the other channels in the lineup are great enough for me to be like, oh, this justifies the extra money every month. And to be honest, y'all don't download enough for TNA anyway. Y'all don't give two shits about TNA. Apparently, New Japan... Gets me more traction than TNA. When I talk New Japan, people listen. They don't listen when I talk TNA. So, I mean, all, all the downloads show it. So, I mean, it, it it's just like when people was like, oh, well, you care more about WWE. Hey, man, the downloads bear out that that's what people want to hear. Right. So, who am I to ban people and people power from what's going on? But without further ado, let's get into this Raw, uh, talk about it, mix it up, mm-hmm. and then we'll work our way into everything else that's happening this week. Uh, we'll work our way through the news, and then we'll talk about Royal Rumble. We will talk about the history of this storied event. We will talk about the winners. We will talk about the losers. We will talk about the first time ever the title being up for grabs. As the champion will defend the title in the Royal Rumble. Mm, mm, mm. Just remember, when Flair won the title at the Rumble, he won it for a vacant title. Right. This is not. This is the champ defending his belt, and not only is he going to defend it, they go make sure he comes in as number one. So he literally has to take on everybody. He will defend that belt because uh, originally Big Show was going to be number one, and. Wow, that's going to suck if that's one versus two. Mm, the show mm, is number mm. two. It's going to be a long ride for the champ. Uh, we'll get to it later because there's some things and some ideas. Uh, Raw took care of something for me because I was one guy that I was worried about that we was overlooking. And Raw said, no, we are not overlooking him. 
and we'll talk about that at the end. Exactly. But uh, Keish, I'm going to defer to you. We open Raw, Roman Reigns, Chris Jericho. We're talking, and the League of Nations show up. I almost forgot they were a thing. Yeah, I did too. Um, I really wanted to forget, but you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Because, I mean, they hadn't really been together for a while. And they haven't done the entrance thing for a while. They all had their own weird things going on. Right. So I forgot they were a thing. Also, I thought this was going to be a vehicle for Rusev to maybe come out of the slums a little bit. No nah, man, it's just an extra punch your bag spot for him. Exactly. When they need somebody to get that ass, well, Rusev is the one that's getting called. Uh, they still must be pissed at Rusev. Because mm, mm, mm. he's taking the ass whoopings. Yeah. It's like, all right, time for a Superman punch. Let's get Rusev in there. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what happened. But it was too funny. Like, and and it, the setup was just, it was classic to me. Like, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Rusev ain't winning shit. <laughs> he, he's still in the doghouse. Poor baby. What will he have to do in order to get out of that spot? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, hey, somebody got to mess up worse. Exactly. That's just how things go. You know what I mean? But until then, that's what he's going to be relegated to. Um, we'll see how that works out. But all in all, um, one thing I noticed is that Sheamus does look stupid. Mm. And they're going to have to like cut his hair or something. They're going to have to do something that distracts people from that. Yeah, they are. Right now, they stuck on he looks stupid. And that's kind of hard to have a monster heel. If everybody just think he looks stupid. I mean, he does look stupid. Like, <laughs> like if you want me to be truthful, he does look stupid. Like, yeah, that mohawk is awful. I can't. I'm sorry. I just can't get past it. His hair is awful. Like, I'm really need him to cut that. Ugh. That beard. Really? The beard. The beard is worse than the mohawk. So... It's funny how they talk about the mohawk. They, uh, the beard looks worse than that. So the combination of the two together, he needs to cut all that off. I mean, he just needs to stop this. I guess they thought that this would be a good look for Seamus, but it's really not. It, it, it is. And, and that's why the crowd can't get past it. And I don't blame him. If I was out there, I'd say he looks stupid too. <laughs> he does look stupid. Right. No, it was, it was very <laughs> dumb looking. Um, going through so Roman Reigns defeats uh, Rusev in a one on one match. Um, Jericho is a special guest referee and kicks out uh, the three members of the League of Nations because it was interfering, right? And we got to the match that we wanted. Um, Natalia defeats Brie Bella in what I call a total divas hype match. Mm-hmm. Um, Brie came out with Alicia. Uh, Natty came out with Paige of all people. Paige. Uh, Paige, I guess, is a baby face now. Uh, we're going to ignore that Paige attacked Natty in the locker room about two months ago. Exactly. And we're just going to fast forward that A, it's about the Total Divas feud now because we got to sell that T show. Of course. Uh, so that's happening. Uh, also, I think the premiere came on tonight. The season premiere? Or was the season premiere last night? I don't remember. Um, I haven't watched Total Divas in a while. But the season premiere is coming up. Um, I'm also surprised that the Dudleys and Wyatts is still a thing. Why is it? Like, I don't know. It's like we're still reaching back for that match. Like, the Dudleys lost in a very defining fashion. In an extreme fashion. You can't go back. Right. But it's like... I think we got to make the Wyatts look good. So now they brought in uh, Ryback to help the Dudleys, and he lost two. So they just lost a six-man tag match here on Raw. Uh, no rest for the weary. Uh, Big Show defeats Heath Slater, whose job squad was out there also. Now this has potential. Uh, they all suck, the social outcasts. 
But I think eventually that can spit out somebody. Maybe Slater, maybe Bo Dallas, but maybe that can spit out somebody who tries to take over like the mid level tier of people and help out. Because at the end of the day, they need people to help out, and we need bodies that get get performed, right? All right. So maybe we can work something out with those guys. Um, WWE did some solid for Black History Month. Oh, not Black History Month. I'm sorry, the MLK holiday, which was Monday. Uh-huh. Um, incredible video package. Man, they really good at those video packages. But uh, that being said, can more than Jigaboo Joes be a character option for black wrestlers? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but that is too funny. Like, come on, man. Seriously. That's how you feel, though. You just be like, come on, man. Just Can we please just want some life? Just why? Mm-mm. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is there. Um, but I'll say this. All the black wrestlers won last night. Or a Monday night, Big E defeated Jay Uso in a one on one match. Awesomeness. Um, what I call the MLK Day match. All right. Titus O'Neil, Mark Henry, and R Truth with Neville. Because Neville is a guy that comes from the outside. He also should be embraced. Uh, defeat uh, Stardust, Tyler Breeze, and the Ascension. Uh, funny match. Uh, Titus O'Neil missed. With toss the Tyler Breeze to Mark Henry. Poor kid. But, uh, did you notice the Titus O'Neill Omega Sapphire trucks? <laughs> For real, like, he had the crest and everything <laughs> on the truck. Why, though? Like, seriously? That's the thing. Like, he is the Q Dog wrestler. It, 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 is, it is not a game for him. <sighs> I swear sometimes. You just be like, are you kidding me? Just no. Just why? Nicole laughs. She, she thinks it's fucking hilarious. She is like, <laughs> she was like, I mean, she, almost to the point where she get mad at it sometimes. She be like, "Yo, this dude ain't got no life. <laughs> like this dude must have just joined the fraternity, and that was the end of his identity." Right. So, um, like, and that's what it is. Like, he just. He is ultimately, like, he just didn't do nothing else with his life. Like, he just joined the frat, and that was it. I like it, too. Uh, you know dudes who've been on the yard too long? Like, yeah. They still yeah. hang around. Yeah. And it's like, who is you? And you find out he graduated in, like, 92. Right. But he still be up at campus. Talking about it. My day, we used to ride around in a Suzuki you know what I'm saying? Listening and, to NWA. And you looking at him like, what? Like, what yeah. do you mean? Why are you right. here? Yeah. Right. Like, dog, man, that Onyx Slam, when that came out, dog, we just used to be crunk. We'd be like, Slam. <laughs> what, that 93? <laughs> right. How the fuck old are you? <laughs> Oh, nigga, it is 2002. I'm too old to be. <laughs> You're just sitting there looking at him like, excuse me? Like, but like, did you really? 40? Yeah. Don't your kids miss you? Okay, I digress. Because I think Titus O'Neil is actually a good dude. And I think he is incredible for the WWE, an incredible ambassador. And we'll love to have him on the show. So I would hate to think that he downloads this one and think that I'm just shitting on him. No. No, we're not. I just find it funny. That's not what's going on. No, these are are just good, healthy jokes. That's all. Good, healthy jokes. Now, if you get offended, then I wasn't healthy, I guess. (laughs) For you. For me, though, it was healthy. Um, I'm Uh, apparently, we are going to get Becky Lynch and Charlotte for the 18,000th time. Yeah, I know, right? Like, <laughs> like, you want to be excited about it, but you see it so much. It's just like, okay, really? <laughs> like, um, I was, I'm not surprised, but at the same time, it's really like, and I, how many times are they going to have this match after the fact? 
That's the better question. <sighs> oh, how they do the divas. It's so ridiculous. The match. I mean, I'm, I'm digressing. We all over the place. All right. The match that really, I think, really wasn't a match. Uh, we finally got to the highlight reel with Chris Jericho. It was going to be explosive. It was Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar in there talking about winning the Royal Rumble. Uh, Jericho was there because Jericho has considered himself a favorite to win the Royal Rumble, which I doubt. But hey, why not? Could Jericho be a good transitional champion? Um, him and Paul had a good exchange of verbal. They did what they both did on the mic. I, I like that. Uh, and I like Roman establishing himself. Like, he ain't no punk. I like Roman Reigns asserting himself. And he hit that spear on Brock something vicious. Like, hey, I am the big dog here. Exactly. Let's pick up where we left off at WrestleMania. And, hey, I had you on the ropes. I am legit here. Right. Now the League of Nations came down and got found out what Suplex City was about. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, then Roman hits another spear. I said, shit. That's what we doing? Right. But then the Wyatt showed up, Keish. The that was Wyatt. But and they beat the hell out of everybody. <laughs> right. Um, here's the thing. And they decimated Brock. I have all what last week I said I like the idea of Bray Wyatt dominating the rubble and having his three goons. You know what I mean? Right. And it looks like that's something we're gonna get. You have to entertain the possibility that he can win the rubble. I don't understand how Bray Wyatt is not listed as anybody's favorite. Uh not so much of that how you think the booking is gonna go. But just from a logic standpoint, okay? Right. Roman is a favorite because he's the champion. He won last year. And damn it, a hero can be a hero sometimes, right? Right. So there's a wonderful book called A Hero Ain't Nothing But a Sandwich. I suggest you read it. I think it's some good fun children's literature for everybody. But I digress. Um, Roman makes it legit. Brock being the baddest man on the planet. And dangerous as all get out is a legitimate guy that I can put as a now as a Royal Rumble contender. Right? Right. Uh, I can always make the statement that like Paul Heyman, Brock shouldn't have had to compete in the Rumble. Fuck it. The winner who wins the title will face Brock at WrestleMania. Done deal. No. It's- and that may happen that way. Right. You know the look at right? Right. Also, uh, but we'll probably step a number one contender match in Elimination Chamber. The, I don't understand how Bray Wyatt can't be in your top three as a favorite because, in all honesty, logistically, he should be a favorite. He has three monsters, six, eight plus each, that are down for him. Braun Strowman is as big and strong as anything we've ever seen. Now, I think Braun Strowman can fly a suplex city. Right. But he didn't get an opportunity because overwhelming numbers and he caught a big foot to the face from Luke Harper. So what we're looking at is, like I said, those big guys were even too much for Brock to overcome alone. Of course. Hey, who the fuck gonna help Brock? Because that's the thing. He don't have any friends. No, he doesn't, and there's, like, no one, and I mean, like, no one that's willing to just come up and be like, hey, let me go run out and help this dude real quick. Like, nobody. There's, like, nobody that, because even with those that don't really have friends, like, at least sometimes every once in a while, they have that person that comes out and decides, I hate this person too, so I'm going to come help you out. And it's not for you, though. It's for me and my own personal endeavors. Brock doesn't have that. It's like no one wants to step up and be like, I'll help you. No, that doesn't happen with Brock. So he just kind of just ends up in these situations of is this too many and it's too dominating. He gets his ass kicked. Like, it's... What do you do with that? Like, I mean... 
how do you really respond to that? It's like, do you feel sorry for Brock? Do you just be like, Brock, no, why? Jesus. I mean, I mean, what really comes from that? Well, that's the thing. Nobody can, he, he doesn't have the sympathy card. Nobody's going to feel sorry for Brock Lesnar. Right? No, no. I mean, so. how could you? Because Brock's MO, and this is why it's so easy not to feel sorry for him, but his MO is like, I'll kick anybody's asses in my way. Period. Like, he thrives for pain, for giving other people pain. Like, it's, it, it once you get to that point, you know, you don't really want to jump into that. It's no one feels sorry for him because Brock doesn't feel sorry for anyone else. There is no, what's the words I'm looking for? He has no sympathy factor. So no one <laughs> uses stare towards him. It's like, meh, uh-uh, just bye. I, I personally can see how this happens all the time, you know, with Brock, because it's easy. It's easy to be like, nah, I don't feel sorry for him. He's all right. He'll hold his own. He always has been. So when stuff like this happens, it's like, ooh, somebody should help him. <laughs> I hate to laugh about it, but to me, it's kind of funny. You know, it's like, oh, man, ooh, somebody should get out there and help him. Somebody gonna help him? <laughs> and quite start looking around at each other like, somebody gonna help him? Anybody? No? You? No? You know, I run out there? Mm-mm. No? Not happening? Okay. Not even you? But you need the TV time. No? I'm not doing that? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm awful. You know what? I'm going to stop. I'm awful. I swear I'm awful. <laughs> but it's funny, though. Somebody has to find a humor in all of this. I mean, seriously. It is what it is. Go Brock. <laughs> yeah, you the man. Knock yourself out. Uh, yeah. Uh, look at here. It's about it uh, for Raw. Uh, like I said... Thought it was a very interesting go home show. Uh, I'm glad we're doing something with the Wyatts. How it books itself out of WrestleMania, I don't know, but they got to get a big match out of them too, right? Right. I, I can't revisit the Undertaker thing. We got to keep the Undertaker away from them, um, unless you're going to put him over the Undertaker. Exactly. If you're not putting Bray over the Undertaker, there's no need to have him near the Undertaker. Please don't. Undertaker, I don't think you get any value add out of it uh, with him and Undertaker anywhere near each other. Right. If he can't beat the Undertaker. So uh, I think that's a very, very important piece to the whole puzzle of how things should go down. But uh, we're going to come back on the other side of the break. Break! We have birthdays. We're going to do the news. Which is a lot going on in the news. There's some news that relates to Royal Rumble. Uh, will there be a surprise entrance? I don't know. Uh, well, there always are, but like lately, you know, somebody who actually is active and can participate. So we'll see what we can we'll mm-hmm. get in that card. Right. And, uh, Keish, <laughs> there you go. One Ron Killings, our truth. Has a whole catalog of music on iTunes? No, I did not know that. Yes, um, with the banging hit, Rep Your City. I did not know he was from Charlotte, but apparently he is from Charlotte. And shout out to the Hornets and the Panthers. And our truth loves you. And he got a song about it. And he tell you how down he is. Now, see, I knew because of Table for Three, I knew that he was making music. You know, in his spare time, like he'd be at home and he would record stuff when he's at home and whatever. But I did not know that this music was actually being put out, you know, for the world to download and everything. But the men did say that he has like some of our truth's music and like he actually listens to it and all that kind of stuff. So I guess um, 
I, I guess this was more than I thought. I thought he said, though, I think he had said on the show that he had the music on SoundCloud. So for me to find out now that it's on iTunes, like, oh, man, I did not know he had a whole catalog on there. So you learn something mm. new every day. Even. Yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out there, random factoid uh, about a professional wrestler. Also, his birthday was very recently, and they celebrated at SmackDown. Uh, the tape is floating around the internet because you will not see it tomorrow or tonight when you watch SmackDown. But they celebrate the man's birthday. He turned forty-four. Uh, he's an elder gentleman in the business. So, uh, how about your boy, our truth? And other than that, uh, we'll come back on a break. I uh, will give you a full rundown of birthdays, the news, and like I said, it'll be all about Royal Rumble. The history, the pageantry, who will be the next champ coming out of this event, and who is paving their way to the road to WrestleMania. All that will be discussed and broken down and ready to go. So, how about y'all on the other side of the break? Break! Ow! The monster, that's what I call him. The new monster arrives on the scene. Bam, bam, Bigelow. Well, Bigelow, you know, I have traveled the world over, and I have met a thousand women, some big, some short, some skinny, but the bottom line is, you, my friend, are like a lot of women I see day in and day out. You are sexual. <laughs> you don't like that, do you? Bigelow? Nobody likes to be called Fat Boy. Well, Fat Boy, you tell the world that you've been to the big time? No way. This is the big time. This is the NWA. This is Jim Crockett, Ted Turner, and Ric Flair. So, big and old, wherever you think you've been, whatever you think you've accomplished, think of it like this. Luger. It's like this thing. It's like this. The road wires are like this. And you are fat boy. You don't like that, do you? Well, let me tell you something, fat boy. You don't like it? Do something about it. Don't talk about where you've been and what you've done. Walk that aisle and shut this mouth. Once again, Ric Flair, tell the like it is, Dusty Rhodes, Murdoch, Sting, Luger, Bam Bam Bigelow, the Colossus, <laughs> learn to live with it, because <laughs> everybody knows who it is the best thing going to do. How about it? On the flip side, we are back from our break. Uh, we will go to the birthdays. That is a very short segment this week. Uh, yesterday, or well, the day before yesterday, because you're probably getting this on Thursday, on the 19th, which is a Tuesday, legend Pat Patterson celebrated a birthday. Uh, Pat turned 70. 70, let's see, 74, 75. Uh, our truth. Mr. What's Up celebrated his birthday on Tuesday. Really? Uh, like I said, check out the video. It's floating around online with the superstars. They sing a happy birthday. They have a good time in the ring. That happens. Uh, Tyler Breeze also celebrated his birthday Tuesday. Uh, other than that, that was it for the 19th. You know, by his down on the 20th. And on the 21st, which would be Friday, well, th Thursday, I'm sorry, uh, May Reese. Uh, wife of the Miz celebrates her birthday. Uh, May Reeves turns 33. Awesome. So, that's it for the birthdays. Let's get to some news. Oh, Lord, Jeez. the news. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the news. Mm -mm. Yeah, uh, first, let's go with our IP. We want to address the passing of legendary Iron Mike Sharp, a uh, wrestler in the 80s and the 90s in the WWE. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all remember Mike Sharp. 
Uh, Mike did a lot of work as enhancement talent back in the day, but he was one of the more popular enhancement talents. Uh, so he was a uh, he was definitely a WWF guy. He passed away at the age of 64. Um, he is best known before being like the perennial jobber. In 1983, he challenged Bob Backlund for the uh, world title. Uh, Sharp have been having issues with his health lately and uh, been using a wheelchair since 2007. But uh, he worked the mid card throughout the 1980s and 90s and. Mm-hmm. Uh, he used to call himself Canada's best wrestler. He spent a little time in New Japan. Uh, and you can see him on uh, the very first Raw in 1993 with uh, Mr. Perfect. Yeah. And of course, he takes that ass whooping there. But uh, good job. I'll say good job. But RIP Mike Sharp. Uh, definitely one of the guys that was a part of the childhood that I enjoyed so much and watched the wrestling. I met him. From there, uh, let's go on with Joe Ross. Uh, They have announced that he will start calling wrestling again. If you are missing Joe Ross talking about wrestling and doing that play-by-play, he's taking over Moro Ronaldo's spot over at AXS TV. Really? So, as you know, AXS airs uh, New Japan, and they air, like, older shows. Like, usually they show's about a year behind. So, what they're going to do... Uh, they air with English commentary and the guys go over it. Uh, Joe Ross is going to step in and do the play-by-play over there. Which should be very interesting. Uh, Ross is very knowledgeable of the product. And the dude's an A1 broadcaster, so I think it'd be good to have him as a part of that. That's right. Also, um, to fuel more rumors that Shisuke Nakamura is coming to the WWE, um, he is being stripped of the IWGP IC title key. Why? <laughs> New Japan really ain't said they ain't really put out a hard statement, but they are stripping him of the belt. Um, even though Nakamura will appear in the final shows. A lot of people thought he was going to drop the belt to Kenny Omega before he left. I don't know if the relationship is strained that bad. Uh, he got a few more performances and shows to do. Before the January 30th date, which would effectively end his contract. And like I thought they would have him do the honors to Kenny Omega at some pay per view or something, but maybe not. So it is what it is. He is giving up the belt. And we'll see if that is a story with them in New Japan or what we think is true is that, hey, he's he got to open that store. All right. And, uh, you know what I mean? It is as easy as it look because like they might have waited to do the you know, put final pieces right flat. And don't know where it stopped. Don't even know how to put some of it together. But uh yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Speaking of also defection rumors, AJ Styles coming to the WWE, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. He uh cut a promo and people was chanting Royal Rumble in one of his last matches, uh, one of his UK shows. He did not confirm or deny that he might show up to be in the Royal Rumble. Uh, no tech that I know of showed anything, but hey, I see a picture of him on Instagram for John Cena, which is fueling the fire. Also, the WWE. It's talking about it more and more. Now, I don't know if it's because it's a setup or if they just know it's getting traction and they want to be a part of it. Well, my thing is, if it isn't a setup and it really is going to happen, then it won't necessarily be a surprise entry anymore. Correct? I mean, that's just my personal opinion on it. Like, Well, it'll be a surprise if the fact that like no, they don't make nothing official. So they really haven't told anybody anything and if the official announcement is him stepping out that curtain at Royal Rumble as number like 28, I think we, we're in business. I would love to see that Pele kick in the Royal Rumble. <laughs> right. This is true. Perfect, this is true. Perfect place for it because somebody go run around with a hit chick with a head cut off and I think he can nail that. Right? Right. So, that's going down. Um... Uh, 
well hopefully it goes down uh let's see i'm trying to make sure i cover all the important stuff so about the pass of uh, mr sharp there um and daniel bryan uh future is still up in the air um as you know, he has not been cleared by WWE doctors, but he was cleared by his old doctor. So we're trying it. We're in Pittsburgh now, hoping for, you know, that third opinion, uh, or hoping for, you know, our specialists to reevaluate and take a look and see, because uh, I think people would love to see Brian back in the ring. Of course. And if you're talking about new people coming over from Japan and stuff like that, I think he has a new element and adds matches that could definitely be had. But, flip side of all of that, hey man, how much can you trust him? That's a good question. A very good question. Something to really think about. So, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but, Besides all that, uh, Keish, we got Royal Rumble. Right? Royal Rumble! Rumble! Sorry, had to do that. Bring it down for you. Uh, this is like the 29th Royal Rumble. Uh, 1988, we debuted. The Royal Rumble is actually not a pay per view, it comes on free TV on the USA Network. Only 20 men entered that Royal Rumble. It was won by Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Uh, it evolved over the years. For a shot for the title at WrestleMania, uh, it is probably the most interesting match the WWE puts on. Uh, thirty men all vying for the title of being Mr. Royal Rumble. This time, all thirty men vying for the title of being world champ. Uh, the idea of being world champ minimizes the impact of friends or having friends for that person. But what you gotta understand too is that eight. Everybody else in that ring is competition for that same goal. Mm hmm. That's right. Right? So, just make sure that is understood. But, uh, I think this year's Royal Rumble probably has a potential to shape up to be really good. Uh, worst Royal Rumble ever is 2011. Is that. Is that fair to say? The 40 man Royal Rumble that was won by Del Rio? Yeah. Was yeah, 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 yeah. So when he was, was on the stage that talking about awful. that he won the Royal Rumble, I was like, hey man, that was like the worst Rumble that they've ever had. Yeah, it was, it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. I'm not even going to front on that one. It was like, really? Just why? Like, what the hell? Mm. So. Right. Uh,. This is the biggest step of stone for your career. I think winning this, I think seven out of the last ten winners went on to win the title. Uh, this one has different stakes because you're going to have the title. And you're probably going to take the title into Mania. Right. Which is huge. I think taking the title, there's something to say about taking the belt to Mania. And there's also something to say, I think, about winning the belt at Mania or defending the belt at Mania. Because I think that's what makes it official. That's the big leagues, right? Right. I've said this before. At certain times, in certain sports, it really don't matter to you do it in a certain place. Hey, man. Okada could have beat Tanahashi at any other New Japan show throughout the year. Until it happened at Wrestle Kingdom, it didn't matter. And that's where he got over, at Wrestle Kingdom. That's right. Daniel Bryan. The moment was so big at WrestleMania 30 after fighting over and over again to get to that point because it was WrestleMania. That was the stage. That's the stage that made it worth it, right? Like, you can't get that feeling at them in your house 12. You can't. No. So, it's got to be that way. Now, other than that, uh, let's get to this card, Keish. Oh, oh, it's a card. <laughs> Let's get to the card, Keith. What are we looking at? All right. All right. First and foremost, you have uh, a fatal four-way tag team match to start the show off. This probably will take place in the pre-show. It is a team of Darren Young and Sandow versus the Dudleys versus the Ascension versus Mark Henry and Jack Swagger. The winning team will get two slots for them and their, against the person they partner 
into the Royal Rumble. Yeah, that's the pre-show. Uh, I, that, but are we picking winners for this? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no. I, like, are we picking winners for this? Because I really don't know who's going to win this. Like, it, it's it's a jumble of a match. I mean, I understand it, but still, uh, I don't know about this. Uh, I'm going to say this. Uh, two things. One, good that they could go to somewhere to transfer uh, the idea. But I'm going go with this. Right. I'm looking at the lineup, and I'm looking at the te- the guys who are there. I'm going to say Mark Henry and Jack Swagger win. One, because they've confirmed through Grapevine and confirmed Mark Henry for the Royal Rumble match. Two, I think it works in the idea of Swagger's the American-American. I think uh, Henry, it works because, hey man, he's already, lo- this could be his last Rumble, so they got to let the big man go out. Uh, at least got wet. You know what I mean? All right. All right. Like he went out there and broke a sweat. So I think they're going to give it to him and let him knock out that rumble. Right? Right. Cheers. So that, that'll be that. That's Mark Heary and Jack Swagger. Match wise. This show is going to be heavy because there's a lot of double duty going on. You're going to see people twice. It always happens at Royal Rumble shows. Uh, Alberto Del Rio and Kalisto uh, will go at it for the third time. <laughs> All right. United States title is on the line. Uh, Keish, who you got? Um, Alberto. I mean, I'm just Del Rio. He's gonna retain and be done with it. Just, just saying. Uh, I mean, is it the obvious choice or is it just be just be me and me? Maybe I'm being a little biased. I don't know, but hey, Del Rio. Uh, no, I, it's fair to say it's the obvious choice. He has a size advantage. He has a crew. Because who knows if the League of Nations shows up. Or at least two people show up. Uh, Del Rio has Sid Cara, who I don't even know if he's back from injury. And I, I, there's no reason for me to say Del Rio doesn't walk out with the belt again. So I will I will size you, Del Rio, also. Right. Uh, Divas title match. Charlotte versus Becky Lynch. Ooh. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> um, as much as I'm like, uh, this match again, um, I have to say that I'm, I'm, a, I'm I will Charlotte. Um, I don't, I don't think Becky is the person that's going to take the title from her at this point. Maybe one day in life, but not right now. So, Charlotte retains. Don't, don't care how. It just, I, it's, I just know that it's going to happen. Like, that's in all of be all of it. So, even if she gets help from Flair, even if she doesn't, even if she wins clean, which she probably won't, you know, whatever. Charlotte's going to retain. That's, that's my final answer. Who uh, wants to be a millionaire? No, okay. Uh, <laughs> You go hear a common theme with this show uh, this week. Yeah, I, I, I think sh- there's no reason for me to believe Charlotte's going to lose that belt. Um, I think she is the one who carries that belt to WrestleMania. Yeah, now does she lose to Sasha at WrestleMania? Very possible, but I think she carries the belt to WrestleMania. I I think that Charlotte has all the tools. I think she's going to work good as a heel. I probably will get some less time with Daddy. But all in all, I think she did okay. All right. <laughs> As that, but uh, yeah, Charlotte retains. And now, the New Day will defend the tag team championships against the Usos. Who you got? Usos. Just, just, just cause. Yeah, no, just <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> I like the New Day. I do. Um, I, I, I actually, I'm, I'm a big fan. But um, I said the Usos because um, at this, I actually at this point see a title change. Um, not just because it's time or it should happen or whatever like that. Okay, 
case may be. I just really think that the Usos in this one is going to prevail over the New Day. Like, um, I, I don't, of course, the New Day has their shenanigans. They do what they do and whatever like that. But uh, I think that the Usos at this point will out wrestle the dynamic trio, because you might as well say trio, of the New Day. So, yeah, that's why the Usos is definitely my pick for this match. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go opposite with you on this one. Like I said, common theme for me is everybody gonna retain. Um, I think that 302 is gonna be overwhelming. I don't think the Usos can get any help because everybody's gonna be tied up with Royal Rumble ideas and stuff like that. So I think for that particular situation, uh, I gotta go with the new day keeping their belts. I I think they would be you know. Okay, to organize and realize what's going on, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep the new. I'm going to keep the belts on the new day. Um, uh, that being said, Dean Ambrose versus Kevin Owens, last man standing match, I see title. This one will probably be one of the first two matches on the show. Ooh, ooh, sorry, that. That's how that that match. That's my reaction for this match right now. Ooh. <sighs> Last man standing. Last man standing. I don't know what to do, King. Because I really love the skills and abilities of both wrestlers. Okay, like I, I really don't know how to call this one. I don't. I won't. But. It's crazy because I want to give it to Dean, but I'm really being biased right now. I have to honestly admit that I'm just being biased because I like Dean and more as a wrestler. Um, I, I really, in all honesty, just see him being the last man standing. But in my mind, it's like, what will that do for Kevin Owens? What will Dean being the winner in this match do for his career? <laughs> at this point you know what will it will it affect it negatively I mean will Kevin look weak I don't think so personally I feel like both no matter who wins both men will come out of this match incredibly well um, it won't really put a dent in anybody's career so I think Dean will be the winner of this bout uh, I think this will be the end all, the be all of it. Um, but just for now, you know, because of course, as we have seen in the past, in the past, a few can resurrect themselves very quickly. So, but man, I know this is going to be one of the matches of the night, if not the match of the night. So I'm definitely excited to see this one. Ooh, ooh, uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh, I was going to say the Ambrose will retain. Um, I think this is a good vehicle for Dean. Uh, I don't. I think Last Man Standing will be a final one of the final matches that they feud. Uh, I like the idea of Dean working with the young man and helping him get his WWE chops up and learn the ropes. Uh, Kevin Owens has a bright future. He has done a lot in the WWE. Uh, in a very short amount of time right. and I would love for him to have a strong showing in the Royal Rumble but as of right now yeah I'm going with Dean Ambrose to take that title hold with him because he does not care if somebody who don't care is very dangerous yeah that is true that's very true so I'm going to go with Dean keeping the belt so now we're down to the big match the Royal Rumble WWE title on the line Rumble top three you can give me whatever what do you think about this big match here I think that this match is going to be of course we know that this match is definitely going to be very more detrimental than um, past matches because of the simple fact that the WWE World Heavyweight Championship is on the line like this is not oh the title as you have mentioned before 
this is not the titles bacon and we're trying to find a champion. This is the champions in this match and his titles on the line. He's number one. Reigns is the number one entry. So he's going to have to scrape, fight, bleed. Like just, he's going to have to pretty much claw his way through this entire match. Personally, he's one of my three. Um, Brock is another one of my three. And, I, you know, I really don't know who to choose for that third person uh, at this point. I really don't. Because I, I want to say, you know, of course we know who some of the entrants are and whatnot. But we don't know all of them. I could take wild guesses and throw in random people. You know, because at this point, you know, that's what happens with the Rumble. It's like, I'll wrestle later on. I mean, I'll wrestle early on in the show, but I'll still show up in the Rumble somewhere. It has happened. We have seen it happen on numerous occasions. So there is no, you know, hell, for all we know, Dean will run out there. You know, it's like, it, it happens. Um, and of course, with that being one of like the contenders or whatnot then it could change the face of it and then of course there's the AJ Styles rumors there's um Jericho there's Bray and then there's Bray's buddies and the League of Nations and so it's a lot of factors going into this match but it's not just your regular one-on-one you know it's 30 men 30 men and, you know, we all know that all 30 are not going to be in the ring at the same time because people get eliminated when they come out. You know, we've seen it too many times where somebody has come out and within like 10, 15 seconds, they're on the floor again, you know, or that they've, they've come out and they've lasted like a whole 30 minutes, you know. So it is, I'm just excited to see the outcome, you know. Personally, I really think in somehow, in some way, that Reigns will retain his title. That even though he's going to be the number one entry into this match, that he will win. That he will be the last person standing in that ring when it's all said and done. Because I don't think that they're ready to take the title away from him just yet. Um... And that's always just not... I think he'll take the title in a WrestleMania, personally. So, somehow, he'll he, this will be his time to shine. You know, somehow, this will be... He'll be the first. Like I said, Brock is my other person. But I really don't know who to choose for number three. It's really hard for me to choose a third person as my, as my, as my top three. Because, like I said, it's just so many. Um, I mean, of course, you know, I'm not just going to choose a random person. I just don't know who to really throw into that spot. Because, you know, you wouldn't throw nobody like Jericho. I'm not going to throw Jericho into it because of the simple fact that I know that everybody else knows that he's not going to win this match. Like, it's it's stuff like that that, that has you kind of draw back a little bit and really think about who's going to be in it. But you know what? Bray could be a favorite. I can honestly say that he could be a favorite and that's just because he's Bray Wyatt. Like, he has what it takes to, you know, but I don't, I really just don't see it happening. I don't. And it, and that's what makes it so hard to choose a third person. Because, okay. Like, that's what's so hard about choosing a third person because it's like you don't really see it happening for anybody else. Like, it's like, no. <laughs> Everybody else is like, no. It's just not going to happen. So, that's my take on the Rumble this year. I'm excited to see it. I'm, I'm really excited to see the sequence of events and the outcome of, like, how this match is going to happen just because of the simple fact that the title is on the line. Like, that's really what has me so intrigued and so into this whole situation. 
Yeah, uh, I, I'll give you this. Uh, it's going to be interested. Uh, I will go down the lineup of people who are confirmed for the match, right? Right. First of all, you got your two not, your, your two uh, interest winners of your contest. Not contest, but the the, the, mat, the open the match, right? Uh, Sheamus is officially in. Stardust is officially in. Brock is officially in. Roman is in, of course. Jericho, Ziggler, Ryback. Rowan, Harper, Strowman, and Wyatt are all four registered already. Curtis Axel, who never got eliminated from last year's Royal Rumble, and never let you forget it. <laughs> right. And Big Show. I'm going to tell you this. The winner is in that list. There will be surprise interests. Hopefully we get some AJ. Maybe not. And we'll check on some other things, right? Right. But I think the winner lies in that top three. Uh, I I. I like the idea of Roman winning, but then Roman gives me that, what do we do now, Phil? What do we do after that? Because if he wins the Royal Rumble, he's effectively faced off every major challenge he could have. You can still try to set the rematch with Brock, but I don't know if that's necessarily going to float, right? Right. Um, Bray Wyatt. I, I, I've got to put Bray Wyatt in the mix. And I would put him up to from three to two. I mean, there's nothing really going on around him. Uh, I don't see any reason why he can fall off. Uh, I'm going to say having those three monsters to run interference, I think can save a lot of QBs. Right. So, um, that's why it did Brock. Now, here's the thing. I can see Bray and Brock having an issue that carries into WrestleMania without either one of them having to win this match. Of course. Because I think course. Brock finds Brock finds his WrestleMania opponent through the, all of this also. So uh, be on the lookout. I think it's gonna get very interesting. And uh, yeah, that's my top three. I think it's Brock. I think you got Roman, and I think you got Wyatt. Um, and really, I want to see Wyatt win. I want to see them not be scared to go to Wyatt and see what happens. Can they handle going to the dark side of the PG-13 era? All right. Yeah, are they? So, uh, other than that, we will be back next week uh, with a show recapping this wonderful event. Uh, be on the lookout for new articles coming up on the website. I have my review of 12 rounds reloaded. Uh, it was not reloaded. It's Twelve rounds, three locked out. Uh, Star Dean Ambrose, and I will be posting a few more movie reviews. Uh, I promise, twenty sixteen will be a much more active year for the website, and it will be done. Uh, Keish, any parting shots? Um, I would just like to always thank everybody for listening to the show. You know, always got a shout out to the fans because uh, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. And we thank you for always uh, listening to us, believing in us, you know. Um, of course, I always have to give, like, the biggest round of applause to Keith for putting, being the mastermind behind everything and for doing a wonderful job and putting everything together. So kudos to you, Keith. Like you're awesome, and I, I just hope that everybody has a good week and that they enjoy the rumble, man. Like that's pretty much it. Yep. Uh, with that, uh, we're gonna close it out, and we will be back on, like I said, next week. Peace. Bye. Man, and then there was one, and it was Sting, and he didn't look too good. Ultimania. Hulk Hogan is here! Hulk Hogan's here! Hulk Hogan is in the building! You're damn right he is! Go get him, Hulk, sir! Damn on, whose side is he on? Go get, what are you talking about? Whose side is he on? What are you talking about? Yes, sir! Get him, Hogan! Go get him, baby! Come on and get some of this now! Who's bad now, boys? Hulk Hogan arrives! Hulk, 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 Hulk. Oh my God! Is he the third man? He's the third man! What oh. the hell is going on here? Hulk Hogan has betrayed WCW!
ECW. He is the third man. Look at this picture. Oh my God. What the hell is going on? Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Probably the lowest shot ever given to professional wrestling. That man did right there, Hulk Hogan. Let's get everybody out of the dressing room right now and kick his rear end. Unbelievable, brother. You what have I been saying the all devil. these years? Huh? What have I been saying all these years? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. A career it's of a lifetime. Right down the drain, kid. I hope you love it. Can you, you see just sold little, your soul to the devil. See the little monsters with the tears rolling down their face right now? We are not going to even acknowledge that three count. Now what happens to us? What happens now to WCW? There was no three count. I never thought I would say that he's yellow. But he may be wearing red, but he's wearing red and yellow. What do we do now? I love you. Hulk Hogan, excuse me, excuse me, what in the world are you thinking? Me, Gene, the first thing you need to do is to tell these people to shut up if you want to hear what I got to say. I have been with you for so many years. For you to join up with the likes of these two men absolutely makes me sick to my stomach. And I think that these people here and a lot of other people around the world have had just about enough of this man, this man, and you want to put yourself in this group, you've got to be kidding me. Well, the first thing you got to realize, brother, is this right here is the future of wrestling. You can call this the new world order of wrestling, brother. These two men right here came from a great big organization up north. And everybody was wondering who the third man was. Well, who knows more about that organization than me, brother? I've been there, I've done that. You have made the wrong decision in my opinion. Well, let me tell you something. I made that organization a monster. I made people rich up there. I made the people that ran that organization rich up there, brother. And when it all came to pass, the name Hulk Hogan, the man Hulk Hogan, got bigger than the whole organization, brother. And then, billionaire Ted, amigo, he wanted to talk turkey with Hulk Hogan. Well, billionaire Ted promised me movies, brother. Billionaire Ted promised me millions of dollars. And billionaire Ted promised me world caliber matches. And as far as billionaire Ted goes, Eric Bischoff and the whole WCW goes, I'm bored, brother. That's why... These two guys here, the so-called outsiders, these are the men I want as my friends. They're the new blood of professional wrestling, brother. And not only are we going to take over the whole wrestling business with Hulk Hogan and the new blood, the monsters with me, we will destroy everything in our path, Mean Gene. Look at all of this crap in this ring. This is what's in the future for you if you want to hang around the lights of this bad hall and this bad man. As far as I'm concerned, all of this crap in the ring represents these fans out here. For two years, brother, for two years, I held my head high. I did everything for the charities. I did everything for the kids. In the reception I got when I came out here, you fans can stick it, brother. Because if it wasn't for Hulk Hogan, you people wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff would be still selling meat from a truck in Minneapolis.
Angeles. And if it wasn't for Hulk Hogan, all these Johnny Come Lately's that you see out here, wrestling wouldn't be here. I was selling out the world, brother, while they were bumming gas to put in their car to get to high school. So the way it is now, brother, with Hulk Hogan and the New World Organization of Wrestling, brother, me and the new blood by my side, what you gonna do when the New World Organization runs wild on you? What you gonna do? What are you gonna do? We have seen the end of Hulkamania for Bobby the Brain Heenan, for Dusty, for Dusty Rhodes, Gene Oakland. I don't know. I'm Tony Schiavone. Hulk Hogan, you can go to hell. We're out of here. Straight to hell.